In this presentation, we'll be solving for the voltage drops on the individual components in a series RLC circuit. So the first step will be applying Ohm's law three different times. We're going to be solving for the voltage drop on the resistor, the capacitor, and the inductor, and just applying the same total current of 3.07 amps times the appropriate ohm values to get the voltage drops on those components. So we can solve all three of those. Voltage drop on the resistor will be I times R or 3.07 amps of current flow times 25 ohms of resistance. That will give us a voltage drop on the resistor of 76.75 volts. Voltage drop on the capacitor, the same I times R, or 3.07 amps of current flow times 60 ohms of capacitive reactants. So the voltage drop on the capacitor will be 184.2 volts. And then the last component, the voltage drop on the inductor, I times the ohm value again, 3.07 amps of current flow times 90 ohms of inductive reactants. That will give us an inductive voltage drop of 276 0.3 volts. Sides of the triangle, or looking at building we call lazy T, the adjacent side is still going to be the resistive voltage of 76.75 volts, and we could place that here also. And we have an inductive voltage of 276.3 and a capacitive voltage of 184.2, which will result in a reactive voltage of 92.1 volts. And that is the difference between the inductive voltage and the capacitive voltage. So building the voltage triangle in order to prove that these values um, match with the sources, the source voltage being 120 volts, we can apply Pythagorean's theorem, which using this triangle would be the resistive voltage squared plus the reactive voltage squared and the square root of that, or an additional formula to simplify this a little bit to verify that we have the correct math done. The E total would be the square root of the resistive voltage squared because that value is unchanging plus the difference of the inductive voltage minus the capacitive voltage and whatever that result is square that. So either method will prove that our math is correct and that we end up with 120 volts.